Times, I'm Mel Melissa Clark. Pleasure to meet you, Michael and Martin. So what do you have here with this very nice looking, very symmetrical dish? This is from 1942 cookbook from Columbia University. It's a family lamb dinner. Okay. So what it was is lamb shanks. We took it off the bone. We braised them, took it off the bone. We followed the recipe. The key note with this is they finished the lamb with a cream sauce. When I first opened the Columbia 1942 cookbook, it was like finding a little time capsule. It was so wonderful because all of these recipes are not the kind of recipes that you see even in retro cookbooks or cookbooks that are historical. These are the real things that people were cooking. And what struck me was how, first of all, how voicey they were. Each recipe was just so wonderfully, it just sounded like the person was talking to me and telling me how they made the recipe. When you go back to 1940s, Health wasn't an issue at the time. Fat content, saturated fat content, trans fat, gluten, uh, stuff like that. So the way we cook now, it's a more healthier version we do, a lot healthier, and there's different things we do to protect the people who eat who have the allergens. Back then, it was like, here's what we're eating today, and if you're in this kind of household, this is what you ate. And that, it definitely shows in the recipes in that book. The Columbia cookbook reminded me of the community cookbooks that are fairly frequently published. There's one in my small town upstate of a local uh, woman's group who uh, collected recipes and presented those recipes of prominent people in town. So you have, a, it's not surprising, a portrait of uh, Columbia population. It's a well-traveled population. There are a fair number of foreign uh, preparation. Sometimes we'll tell you in parenthesis, Egyptian, in case you didn't know. And uh, someone uh, with an Italian name, probably from Italy, giving the real scoop on uh, against all the, quote, crimes done in the name of spaghetti. Something delightful that I found in the book was it was this just um, unapologetic use of awful. I thought it was great. There was kidneys, there were gizzards, there, were, um, there was tongue, there were all kinds of things that today, if I wrote a recipe calling for kidneys, I would have to do a big long apology, like really, these are delicious, I promise. But back then it was just take it for granted. So in one way, you know, we've come a long way. We're eating fresher, we're eating um, fewer canned and boxed products. But then again, we're also more limited in what we eat. We don't have, we're not eating all of the animal the way they were back then. And I think that is a great lesson for us. We don't get to cook that way anymore. I can't add protein or meat or beef items to uh, a vegetarian dish. We made a polenta today. It calls for back fat. We use bacon. There's no way in multi-feedings you could put bacon in something like that because so many people don't like pork or don't eat bacon or can't eat meat because they're vegetarian or vegan. We learn how to adapt to make people happy, so we're trying to make the masses happy instead of individual families with these recipes were made for. These both have apple, these are like similar apple pies, yes. same filling, same crust, and this has a top crust and this has rat, rat cheese. cheese. Rat, that just sounds so, I, I don't want to eat rat cheese, but I... <laughs> In 1942, Maybe you lived did. in America, you ate red cheese. Ate cheese. Any cheese that was born or raised or grew in America or made in America was said it just good for rat traps. So that's, that's where so they get the fun. same rat cheese. Although I have a feeling though, if they're putting it on pie, that means, and especially if Eisenhower is putting it on pie, I'm assuming that means that there is a, it's said with affection and love. It is rat cheese, but yet it is beloved because here it is on this pie. Um, and you know, it is very, I mean, we do have the tradition in America, especially in, um, you know, um, up in the Northeast of serving cheddar cheese with pie, that's very traditional, so this is kind of a, a take on that. Tastes change over the years, and the way that we like our food done today is different from back in the 40s. For example, the cooking times on some of the uh, recipes, we would never cook fish for an hour and a half. We just wouldn't, it would fall apart. But you know what, that's how they liked it back then, and that's valid, and it is a, it's just a difference in taste, and our taste is our own, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's any better.